daratumumab has really run to the front line, not just come to the front line, it's run to the front line with four important trials. One, the Alcyon trial that shows that in transplant ineligible patients, a daratumumab containing quad, quad therapy, so Velcade, Melphalan, Prednisone, plus Dara is better than Velcade, Melphalan, Prednisone. That's really less relevant for us, us here in the U.S. because we don't use so much Melphalan. The Maya trial showed that Dara Revdex is better than Revdex for transplant ineligible patients. So certainly Daratumumab has been approved because of this in transplant ineligible patients. However, most recently the Cassiopeia data showed that Dara Velcade thalidomide dex is better than Velcade thalidomide dex. So that showed an imp improvement in progression-free survival after induction therapy and transplant. Now, so these people are transplant eligible. So now there's approval for DARA in the front line with transplant eligible patients, which I think is a little bit more relevant to our practice here. But again, thalidomide is not really a drug we use a lot. Therefore, we're waiting the final results of the Griffin study, which is DARA Velcade Revdex versus VRD alone. And we already know that the data has shown a deeper response, meaning more patients achieved a CR with DARA, uh, and mo more patients achieved minimal residual disease negativity. However, we don't have the PFS or progression-free survival data yet because it's immature. But I think there's enough data that it, people are starting to adopt this and bringing DARA with Velcade Revdex to the front line. What is a major question and what I'll try to address today is what about DARA Carfilzomib Revdex? And, and that's sort of a, a giant package of, of, of new drugs, but should we bring that to the front line, give everybody their best shot at the beginning, and maybe improve MRD negativity rates?